الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور Wait to Sunnatal Ertika. My dear Islamic brothers, whenever you come to the masjid, you're fortunate enough to come to the masjid for salah or to just take part in the weekly sunnah inspired in Sunnah of Dark Islami. Make this intention that upon remembering, inshallah, Azza wa Jal, you will make the intention of Nafil Ertika. There are many benefits of making the intention of Nafil Ertika. Remember, by Sharia, we are not supposed to eat, drink, or sleep in the masjid. However, if somebody wants to do these acts, he must make the intention of Nafi <coughs> Ritika. It is stated in Fatawa Shami. If someone wants to eat, drink, or sleep in a masjid, he should make intention of observing Ritika. Then he should do some dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then whatever he wants to do, he can do, i.e. now he can eat, drink and sleep. There are many excellencies of reciting the rules upon the best of creation, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has stated, Man salla alayya sallallahu alayhi ashram biha malakum muwakkalum biha hatta yuballi waniha. Meaning that whoever recites the rood upon me once, Allah Azza wa Jal sends ten mercies upon that person. Allah. Not only this, but there is an angel appointed to bring that rood to me. Subhanallah Azza wa With the love and devotion, recite the rood loudly. Sallu ala al-habib. My dear Islam brothers, in order to gain some reward from this gathering, for you coming to the masjid and taking part in this gathering, we need to make some good intentions. Remember the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Ni'atul mu'mini khayru min amalihi. The intention of a believer, a Muslim, is better than his actions. The more good intentions that we make, the more reward we will be given insha'Allah There are many intentions that you can make. I will mention a few intentions and you can say insha'Allah to affirm to these intentions. Number one, lowering my eyes, I will listen to the bayan attentively. So this means paying attention to what you said, not playing with your mobile phone and listening to the bayan with full attention. Instead of resting against a wall, etc., I will sit as you normally sit in a tahiyyat position, if it's comfortable for you. This is with the intention of showing respect for religious knowledge. When you hear the call of Fubu ilallah, Allah, and Sallu ala al-Habib, make the intention that inshallah azza wa you will reply loudly. After the ishtama, I will approach people to say salam, shake hands, and make individual efforts upon them. Inshallah. My dear Islamic brothers, insha'Allah, in today's Sunnah inspired Ijtima, we will be privileged to listen to some faith enlightening aspects of the blessed biography of a wali of Allah, a saint of Allah, a great scholar. A great muhaddith, Imam Ahmad bin Hamad Rahmatullah. But for, for that, we need to pay attention. We need to listen to the entire speech with good intention. So let's listen to a very interesting parable of his blessed life. The grandson of Imam Ahmad bin Hamad Rahmatullah, his name was Sayyidina Zuhair bin Salih Rahmatullah. He states that I heard from my father 
His father's name was Sayyidina Sahih Rahmatullah Ta'ala. And he says that I heard from my father that once when I came home from, from the market, I found that my father, Sayyidina Imam Ahmad bin Hamil Rahmatullah Ta'ala, was waiting for me intensely. I immediately went to him and asked, Oh father, oh my beloved father, were you waiting for me? My father replied, yes. In your absence, a person came to meet me. While you were away, you had gone to the market. A person came to meet me. And I wanted you to meet him as well. But now he has gone. But sit down, I will, list, I will mention to you the, the whole event that took place with that person. This afternoon, I was at home when I heard somebody say salam at the door. Somebody came to, to my door and he said my name and he said salam. I opened the door and I saw a traveler, a musafir in front of me. He was wearing a patched jubba. His clothes, they were patched. He was wearing a shirt under the jubba. He neither had any travel bag nor any utensil to drink water from. So his apparent state, it looked as if this person is a traveler. He has traveled a long journey. You could see that his clothes, his jubba was patched, but you couldn't see that he was carrying a traveling bag or some utensil, some glass to drink water from. After replying to Islam, I called him inside instantly and I asked, where are you from and what brings you here to my house? This person replies, he says, Huzur, Sayya Sayyidi, I am from the eastern valleys. I have traveled all the way from eastern valleys. My heart felt wish was to visit this area. If your house was not here, then I would not have come here. I have just come here to behold you. I've traveled all those miles only to visit you, only to meet you. Sayyidina Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, he says that you have traveled alone in this scorching heat, in poverty, Allah. and tolerated the difficulties of traveling just so you could meet me. So Sayyidina Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal was finding this fact difficult that this person has traveled all the way from the eastern valleys. He has gone through the difficulties of the journey, the scorching heat. You could tell from his face that this person has endured an intense heat. And he said, you have done all that so you could meet me, you could see me. He replied, yes, Hazur. It was my longing desire to behold you it was my longing desire to behold you has brought me here. There is no other purpose for me to come here. Sayyidina so Imam Ahmad Muhammad then says that I wished that I could have, I wish that I had some dirhams, I had some dinar, some worldly wealth that I could give to this traveler. But unfortunately, Unfortunately, mm -hmm. Sayyidina Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal did not have any worldly wealth in the house. But he did have four rotis at the time, four chapatis. Mm -hmm. So Sayyidina Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal says to the traveler that, unfortunately, I do not have any money to give you. I would like to help you. I could see you are in a poor state. I could see that you've traveled <laughs> all the way. And I would like to give you some wealth. But unfortunately, I do not have any wealth on me at this time. However, I do have some rotis with me. And I can give you four rotis that you can take with you. <coughs> the traveler said, Hazur, I have quenched my thirst by beholding you. This is a beautiful reply. Musafir Hussain kya kaha? Ke Hazur, aap ki ziyarat karke. Meri piyash wa hai wa bujh ke liye. Subhanallah. Now, I'm not worried about dirhams or dinars. I'm not worried about the worldly wealth, but with regards to these rotis, if your happiness lies in me taking these rotis, then I will take them with the intention of gaining blessings. Allah. 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 
Sayyidina Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal says that I said to that traveler, please accept this from me. This will make me happy. The traveler accepted the rotis and he said, Hazur, I am hopeful that your given rotis will suffice me until I reach my city. May Allah protect you. That traveler then kissed the hands of Sayyidina Imam Ahmad bin Hamad rahmatullahi alayhi. Then he asked for his permission to leave. Sayyidina Imam Ahmad bin Hamad said that I gave him the permission to leave and I said to him, Fi Amanullah, may Allah Azza wa Jal take care of you. He then left. I stood outside looking at that person until he disappeared from my sight. Sayyidina Saleh, Rahmatullah ta'ala lay, the son of Sayyidina Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, Rahmatullah ta'ala lay, says that my father would often speak about that traveler. This is how much impressed Sayyidina Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal was with this person, that after many years, he would often narrate that event again and again. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear Islamic brothers, <coughs> the blessed personality that we're privileged to listen about, to hear the, the, the attributes of Imam Ahmad bin Hamad rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, he was certainly a special bond of Allah Azza wa Jal. His personality was a combination of innumerable good qualities. He was a wali of Allah Azza wa Jal. Not only this, he was a great muhaddith and he could remember thousands of ahadith in his memory. <coughs> he also wrote Masnad Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, a beautiful collection of ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The people of that era, they would truly appreciate scholars and would have true devotion and love for the noble awliya of Allah Azza wa Jal. You've just heard about this person who traveled many miles, who traveled many miles, gone through all the difficulties of a long journey, only to do what? To visit a noble monument of Allah Azza wa Jal, a wali of Allah Azza wa Jal. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hear more about the blessed personality of Imam Ahmad bin Hamad rahmatullah ta'ala. His kunya is Abu Abdullah and his name is Ahmad bin Hamad. He rahmatullah ta'ala was born in Rabiul Awal 164 Hijri in Baghdad Sharif. Sayyidina Imam Ahmad bin Hamad was purely an Arab. His father passed away in his childhood. His mother raised and brought him up. He, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Lay, gained his initial education in Baghdad Sharif. He stayed in the company and service of the Muhaddith of Baghdad Imam Hussein Rahmatullah Ta'ala Lay for four years. After his teacher passed away, he, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Lay, traveled to other cities such as Kufa, Basra, Yemen, Syria, Mecca, and Medina Sharif. He rahmatullah ta'ala had such passion to gain the knowledge of Islam that he himself said, when I would leave to gain the knowledge of hadith at the break of dawn, subh sadat when I would leave at that time to gain the knowledge of Islam, my mother would stop me, she would grab me, and she would say, leave when azan is called that, or leave when it is morning. This goes to show how early he would wake up to gain the knowledge of Islam. He, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Lay, had such passion for gaining the knowledge of Islam that besides the affairs of marriage and gaining sustenance, he specially concentrated on gaining the knowledge of Islam to the extent that he did not get married until he was 40 years old. So all that time, up to his age of 40 years, he was busy gaining the knowledge of Islam. He rahmatullah ta'ala lay performed five hajj whilst he was a student and three of them were on foot. Even though only one hajj is fadl upon you. 
he rahmatullah ta'ala lay performed five hajj while he was still a student and today you know what we do even though the hajj has become fard upon us we say there's plenty of time you know i'm i'm still studying i am i've only just got married there's a long life left ahead of me when i'm 50 60 then you know i will go for hajj i will keep body to and then I will do these things. But look at the, the, the beautiful life of Sayyidina Imam Ahmed bin Hamd rahmatullah ta'ala. He, he was still a student. He did not get married until he was 40, but he performed five hajj. SubhanAllah. He rahmatullah ta'ala passed away on the 12th of Rabi al in 241. <coughs> no doubt, he was a special wali of Allah. So. 230 years later, when after his demise, Sayyidina Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal passed away in 241 Hijri, 230 years later, when a grave was dug next to the grave of Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, a part of his grave was opened. So a grave was dug next to the grave of Sayyidina Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal to bury somebody else and part of the grave of Sayyidina Imam Ahmed al Hanbal was opened. So somebody observed that not just the body but even his shroud was still safe and sound. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. This is the state, this is the, the status of awliya of Allah. Subhanallah. At the time of his funeral, 200 non-Muslims accepted Islam. He is the author of Masnad Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, which is a compilation of 40,000 ahadith. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear Islamic brothers, Allah Azza wa Jal grants many blessings to his beloved bondman, to his awliya Allah. <clears throat> and one of the blessings is that Allah Azza wa Jal grants a strong memory to his awliya. The ability to remember things. Due to this ability, a person is able to preserve the knowledge he gains from different sources. And then he takes full benefit from that knowledge. He passes that knowledge on to other people. Alhamdulillah, Imam Ahmad bin Hamad rahmatullahi alayhi is also from those fortunate people who Allah Almighty, alongside making him his, his wali, blessed him with a strong memory as well. <laughs> Through this magnificent blessing and unique memory granted to him by Allah Azza wa Jal, he rahmatullahi ta'ala memorized thousands of ahadith and preserved them in his mind. <laughs> Sayyidina Hussein, the teacher of Sayyidina Imam Ahmed bin Hamad rahmatullah ta'ala he says that Sayyidina Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal was able to memorize many ahadith just from his memory subhanallah he was able to narrate many ahadith just from his memory Sayyidina Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal rahmatullah ta'ala he himself says that when I was 20 years old Sayyidina Hussain rahmatullahi ta'ala passed away but I retained everything that I heard from him in my mind. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-Habib. Sallallahu ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear Islam brothers, we've just heard how excellent the memory of Imam Ahmad bin Muhammad rahmatullahi ta'ala lay was. He rahmatullahi ta'ala lay memorized thousands of ahadith at a young age rather he even memorized the names of many of the narrators of those ahadith too so this is a very difficult task Memoring, memorizing the ahadith is difficult but to also remember the narrator the chain of narrations sometimes there are 10 narrators going back to the rasulullah that Fulan bin Fulan, Fulan bin Fulan said this, he heard it from this person, he heard it from this person. It's a very difficult task. 
But he, Rahmatullah Ta'ala, lay with the blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal, not only he remembered thousands of ahadith, <coughs> but also remembered the narrators of those ahadith too. No doubt this was the special grace and favor of Allah Azza wa Jal. Whereas today, we look at our state, our memory is getting weaker and weaker. Isn't that the case? We cannot even recall what happened yesterday. We do remember the English calendar. We remember March, April, May, all that. But unfortunately, we do not remember what <coughs> Islamic month we're currently in. We do not even know what Islamic year we're currently in. We forget how many rak'at, how many units of salah when we are offering namaz. Our mind is wandering here and there. Despite reading a book, an Islamic book, many times we forget. We forget all the rulings. But look at the state of Sayyidina Imam Ahmad bin Hamd rahmatullah ta'ala. The, the great muhaddith, the great wali of Allah Azzawajal, also look at his financial state, look at his worldly state. A traveler has come to his house, traveled all the way from the eastern valleys, and he does not have a few dirhams in the house to give to that person. And then we look at our state. How much wealth do we have? How much, how much wealth have we accumulated in our house, in our banks? And then compare ourselves Islamically, the knowledge that we have to that of Sayyidina Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, a great muhaddith. We cannot even remember the basic du'as that we're supposed to recite. We do not know the, the basic principles to do with the namaz. We do not even know the fara'id, the sunnahs in ghusl, in wudu. And the worst thing is that we do not make any attempt to know, to gain this knowledge. It's more important for us to work seven days a week, to make money, to increase our bank balance. But what about the bank balance that is that would be useful to us in the hereafter? The Islamic knowledge, 